My neighbor would start mowing his lawn right when I start filming this. <laughs> Hello everyone, if you're new here, I'm Alan with Earthglow and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. Uh, as you guys know, fragrance videos make me extra excited and today's video makes me really excited because we are gonna be unboxing, giving you my out of the bottle first impressions of, there we go, Candle Sciences new 2024 year round fragrance oils. and. If you guys know anything about me, you know that Candle Science is probably my single most favorite company uh, to get my fragrances from. And part of that is because of their clean promise. Actually, a large part of it is because of that. But another part of it is because of how well they perform in my products. I'm in no way sponsored by them and no way affiliated with them, but I really, really love their oils. Um, but also, as you guys know, if you've watched these videos for any amount of time, and as Candle Science knows, I like to give my honest, unfiltered opinions of fragrances on this channel. For better or for worse. I almost dropped the whole box. Um, but anyways, if this is something that brings a smile to your face, consider subscribing. And let's get right into today's video. Oh my gosh, you guys, I don't even know what's in this box, like, at all. I have no idea. I didn't even look at the names. So, per usual, they use biodegradable packing peanuts. I always tell people, you can literally just put these in water and they'll dissolve. They're primarily made of cornstarch. All right, so let's see what we have in here. Uh, oh, crystallized ginger and cardamom. I'll just show you the names and then I'll flip you guys around and we'll smell these. Uh, this is kind of weird. Like, I feel like this would be a holiday fragrance. So we'll see how that one goes. Then we've got Amaretto uh, Madeline. Madeline? I feel like I'm saying that wrong. Some type of an Amaretto fragrance. I feel like they just released an Amaretto. Am I imagining things? Not that there's anything wrong, like I'm all for, amarettos are, I think they do really well on candle scents. They kind of play on that oatmeal, milk, and honey type vibe, but done like the adult version. Uh, this next one I'm probably most excited for, leather and labdanum. If you guys know anything about labdanum, it is something you usually find in luxury oils. Oh my God, look at this, you guys. I've never gotten these from them. So they actually have included, holy cow, a bunch of water strips. They do sell these as well, but that's fantastic. Um, if they're considering, if they're including some of these with fragrance oil. I'm not sure if they just included these because I was leaving a review, but Candle Science, if you are watching this, it would be fabulous if you would consider adding a few of these to um, your fragrance oil packages because they're so helpful, as you guys know, in getting a balanced scent profile. So, cool. All right, let's see what else is in here. We have maple sugar. Also, it seems kind of like a fall fragrance, but I'm interested to see what kind of take they're gonna have. Um, we have, ooh, I'm really excited for Yuzu Blossom. Really excited for that. I love any like exotic, kind of high-end spa leaning florals. Oh my God, okay, maybe I'm most excited for this one. Fog and Fern. I have no idea, but everything about that is like up my alley. I feel like there's one more in here. Yes. Uh, okay, White Oris and Sandalwood. Candle Science has been killing it lately with their sandalwood fragrances. So we'll see what that one is gonna do. And I think I've got everything. All right, you guys, I really hope that the lawnmower sound isn't coming through too loud on the camera. He just started mowing right when I started filming this video. Um, so, <laughs> yes, I'll find out later. I'm not retaking it though, because this has gotta be like initial out of the bottle first impressions. I don't even know what I wanna start with. I think I wanna start with, um, let's start with the Yuzu Blossom, okay. So, and if you're new to these videos, 
I do not consult any of the set notes prior to filming. I like to be surprised and I also like to tell you guys what I'm getting out of the fragrance rather than having like expectations of what I'm supposed to get. And then, you know, it sort of like gives you an idea of what you're supposed to be smelling or what they think their fragrance smells like. And for me, I like to just give you what I smell. So Yuzu Blossom. Um, Actually, Makesy has a couple really good yuzu fragrances and that I really like. And I will say that it's kind of a more exotic, expensive, almost, I want to say, ooh, I'm smelling something like a foot away. Uh, like Japanese almost type of floral. And I'm trying to get their strip here. Hold on a second. Uh, there you go. Yeah, it's like a Japanese type of a floral. And so... I'm really excited. I don't think Candle Science has anything like this in their line yet. And I feel like this would be a great fragrance potentially for like if you have a spa leaning collection, but let's see what Yuzu Blossom by Candle Science is gonna do for us. Oh, wow. Wow. I am very impressed right off the bat. Very impressed with this. So what I was smelling from like a foot away had sort of, um, it had a really strong like fruity uh, scent. And I thought maybe it was going to remind me of something that was almost like candy, which you guys know I'm personally not a big fan of anything that smells remotely like that. But this fragrance, even though it's on the sweeter side, I would say that this definitely has that upscale spa type of a vibe to it. And it's extremely prominent uh, right out of the bottle. And like a foot away, I was smelling really strong notes to this one. I definitely think that I'm getting the yuzu. I'm getting something that has, like I said, a kind of exotic, almost Japanese smelling type of a floral. And I'm also getting, uh, it smells like a very expensive uh, shampoo that I've, I've smelled maybe by Aveda. I can't remember. Um, but it's like a high-end shampoo that I've really liked. And my grandmother, who is actually, uh, before she became a nurse, she was a beautician. And she used to have like all these fancy beauty products that you know you couldn't normally get unless you had a license. And she had some shampoo and it was actually like an orange color, but it smelled better than almost anything I could describe. And that's what this reminds me of, like out of the bottle. Like if you make, I feel like soaps or shampoos, especially, maybe even in like a shampoo bar, this fragrance would be so good, I think. Now I could also see this being really good in a candle. I feel like there's something that, it's almost like a guava or like a tropical note, maybe passion fruit or guava or something in this, or papaya. Uh, it's something that's sweeter, but it's sweeter in like a fruity, not candy fruity, but like a escape, like going on vacation, going to a luxe spa on vacation type of a way. Next up, let's take a look at, all right, let's take a look at this crystallized ginger and cardamom. My neighbor stopped mowing now, so. Uh, I am surprised that this one and the maple sugar are in a year round collection. However, I will say personally that a lot of times fragrances, wow, and I am smelling something like a foot away once again with this one. Um, Candle Science has been killing it with the hot throw and with the fragrance throw out of the bottle lately on a lot of oils. And I'm just putting that out there. Like whatever you guys are doing, if you're watching this video, you're killing it um, with the potency. And that's such a big deal when you're making candles. Like you need that. The hot throw is what brings your customer back, right? Like we always say the cold throw sells the candle. The hot throw keeps your customer coming back. Um, but anyways, yeah. So, wow, I don't even need to smell this. Like I can literally smell this. Um, and it's definitely giving crystallized ginger and cardamom vibes, at least what I'm smelling. But what I was trying to say is that when you are doing your candles, like you're choosing your scents for your different collections, um, a lot of the time, like I use, for example, Candle Science's, um, oh God, I'm gonna have to think of, uh, I'll put the name up on the screen. I have so many fragrances, you guys, it's not even funny. But I use it as my vignette, Brandied Pear, Brandied Pear. Um, I use that as my vinyasa flow candle in my year-round uh, artisan collection. 
it's very popular like that, even though they market that as more of, I believe they market it as like a holiday, a fall and holiday fragrance. Um, the old branding pair, I'm almost out of it too. <laughs> so I'm not a big fan of their new uh, clean scent or their revised, sorry, brandy pair. Uh, so big fan of the old brandy pair. And then also their, um, I wanna say, is it their cashmere plum? There's a couple other ones, like their banana bread is really good that I use year round. But you can take a lot of fragrances that might otherwise be really hearty, like wintry fragrances, and they can, depending on how you market them, easily be year round scents. So, and that's what I'm feeling like maybe they're going for with this. But anyways, let's smell crystallized ginger and cardamom. Wow. This definitely, to me personally, smells like the holidays. I, I'm really getting an authentic crystallized ginger with this and there is cardamom to it as well. It is more in the background to the ginger, but I'm definitely getting a strong cardamom vibe. If there's cinnamon in this, it's very light. It's definitely uh, crystallized ginger heavy. If you guys have ever smelled that crystallized, like that ginger candy, um, and normally I'm not a fan of candy fragrances, but in this application, because the ginger is so kind of um, spicy, bitter almost, uh, it works with the sweetness. And yeah, I think this is such a joyous like fragrance. I don't think I personally would put this in a year round collection unless I had a very unique way to market it, but I definitely think that this one would really sing around the holidays. Next up, let's take a look at, ooh, let's take a look at, I'm really excited for, yeah, let's do the white orris and sandalwood. I cannot wait. Um, they've been killing it with their sandalwood oils lately, you guys. Like, I'm gonna put up some of my favorites on the screen, but, and you guys all know that I use their regular sandalwood as a blender in like a lot of different scents. So, yeah. Sandalwood can be a difficult one to get a good hot throw on in general. However, when I have tested out the Candle Science, some of their recent um, like woodsy, earthy fragrances, again, I'll put a few names on the screen, uh, the hot throw is has been really good. So this is, and I've tested them out primarily in coconut waxes. So this is white orris and sandalwood. I'm expecting something woody, earthy. Oris is another kind of luxury type note. So I don't know, something kind of expansive, refined, spa-like, but earthy, woodsy, kind of that forest bathing type vibe. Oh, wow. I think. Okay, <laughs> I don't know about this actually. Wow, okay. So this one feels like it's changing a lot as it dries down on the strip. I wanna give this one like another 10 seconds. This is the lightest one that I've smelled of um, all the oils so far, but definitely like for the notes, like the sandalwood and the orris, those are both kind of base notes. So I'm not surprised by that. This may end up being more of a blender type fragrance, um, but there's something in this that does remind me of almost like hairspray or something. And a lot of the time, like in perfumery, the raw ingredients can have different types of like connotations. Like maybe, uh, like if you smell, um, oh God, I'll put the name of the aromatic molecule I'm thinking of up on the screen. That can smell kind of earthy, woodsy, but also slightly, like a lot of the base notes in perfumery. I, I bought like a, several different kits so that I could smell individual base notes um, from Perfumer's Apprentice. I purchased like some of their sample kits and this definitely has like that really, uh, it has a lot of base to it. And I'm not sure, I, I feel like this would really probably work well as a blender, but I'm not sure as a standalone how this one would do. All right, next up, let's take a look at, let's take a look at this Amaretto fragrance. Now, Candle Science, I feel like had an amaretto that I really liked recently. If so, I'll put the name up on the screen, but I don't know. Let's see what this new amaretto is gonna do for us. I'm expecting something sweet, a little bit, yes, but also alcoholic, nutty, kind of gourmand, definitely. So here we go. 
Oh. Okay. Oh my god. What does this remind me of? This reminds me of a lotion by Bath and Body Works. And it's a lotion that I really like. Oh my god. What is the name of it? What is oh, this is a Bath and Body Works lotion. If this is not a dupe for oh, it's some it's it's a cashmere something. Oh, uh, is it white pumpkin cashmere? Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna have to go dig through and see if I still have a little bottle of it because this spot on reminds me of that lotion. So hold on. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I already have it all over myself, but this is the lotion. If you can read that, it's the white pumpkin chai, white pumpkin and chai by Bath and Body Works. And I don't buy a lot of their stuff anymore just because I make my own products that maybe I'm biased, but I feel like are better in terms of the, mm, my God, yes. In terms of the ingredients and the quality. So I just don't buy a whole lot from them, but yeah, oh my gosh, I love this scent. So this is their White Pumpkin Chai by Bath & Body Works or by their White Barn, no, it says Bath & Body Works. And it's one of their Shea Butter Hand Creams. So this Amaretto fragrance, I know this sounds a little bit weird, but it is, I gotta smell it again. Wow. That is strikingly similar. And I am living for it because I have tried to get dupes for this white pumpkin chai and I've got like the vanilla pumpkin marshmallow and tried to mix it with chai this is the most similar fragrance I have um, smelled to that, if you like that oil by Bath & Body Works. Um, I do, well, they literally smell the same because I have it on my hands now, so I'm gonna put this back on the, I'm gonna get a new strip just to be absolutely sure. Okay. So this, Wow, strikingly similar. Yeah, wow. I almost like the Candle Science one better. I don't know, they're so similar. I feel like the Candle Science one is a tiny bit sweeter and the um, Bath & Body Works is a tiny bit nuttier, but that may just be because they put it with shea butter and sometimes shea butter, they're probably using refined shea butter. They're certainly using, they don't use unrefined butters. So I'm quite certain of that, but even refined shea butter sometimes has a little bit of a nuttiness to it. Most of that character is removed when they refine it. And unfortunately, a lot of the natural properties that are so good for your skin also get removed when they refine it, but wow. Next up, let's take a look at Let's take a look at, should we do this leather and lab denim? I think I'm gonna do, yeah, I think I gotta do this leather and lab denim. I'm so excited for this. Lab denim is such a famous note in perfumery. It's actually one of the first um, base notes, I believe, that was used in perfumery. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure. It has a long history uh, in the perfume industry. And so leather, I give Candle Science a really hard time for their leather fragrance. I do have some of it, I believe, if I didn't throw it out. out. Um, I, so it smells really aggressive to me. It's, it's nice as a blender. I would not uh, actually use it as a standalone fragrance at all, but if you want like an actual true to life, like leather, get their leather and... Okay, anyways, so. I'm hoping this is toned down, a little more nuanced, suave, subtle. So here goes leather and labdenum. Ooh, wow. Whoa. You guys, this is like, this definitely seems like it has some of their leather, but the way that it's done, whoa, candle science, whoa. This smells very high end. Uh, <laughs> okay, so if you've smelled like, they have a new rose fragrance that I really liked. I wasn't as big of a fan of it burning though in a candle. I did test it out. Uh, it's their Rose and Oud. And I loved that one out of the bottle. When it dries down on the strip, you really have to let that one like sit in a bag for a while and dry down. 
but when it was burning in a candle, for me, I just got mostly the rose. And it was a beautiful rose, but the oud was like 10%, and I wanted them to be more like 50-50. Now, in this case, I'm really curious how this would be um, in a candle, because this just smells so, like it's profoundly bass heavy, which is so unusual to get with these type of notes. They're usually out of the bottle, much more like toned down um, in terms of the intensity. But yeah, I'm just getting it like, woof, like right in my face. Candle Science, you were not holding back at all on this. And I'm living for it. I am living for it. I can't wait to try this out in a candle and see how this one um, performs because wow, it, it definitely has that oud, that kind of smoked oud note. Not like a cigarette, not like a smoke in your hair, ladies and gentlemen. I always give their fireside a hard time for that as well. We have a complicated relationship though because I have been known to use Candle Science Fireside in several products, but like I said, we have a complicated relationship. And if you're looking for a better campfire scent, I would highly recommend you try their campfire marshmallow. Yes, there is marshmallow, but it gives you all the essence of the campfire without that kind of smoke in your hair. And I know the Fireside fans are just frowning at me right now. Anyways, um, love that. Next up, let's take a look at, let's say fog and fern for last. Let's take a look at maple sugar. Once again, a little surprised to see this in a year round collection, but but I feel like if it's done um, well, and wow, I am smelling this a foot away again, uh, bringing it. Um, if it's done well, in terms of how you brand it, I feel like almost any scent could work year round. So here goes maple sugar. I am from where we have maple trees that grow year round. And yes, I have tapped maple trees. I have made maple candy. Uh, when I was growing up, we used to do it all the time at the nature center. So I'm very familiar with maple sugar and what I'm smelling from a foot away smells just like it. So here we go. Oh, no, actually, it, <laughs> I think this is because it's so potent out of the bottle. Because when I smell this from a foot away, I'm getting like maple sugar, 2AT. And this actually reminds me of how their banana nut bread is. If you smell that one right up close, it smells very synthetic. And this one kind of has that vibe to it. But if you were to smell this like a foot back, like I said, when I just opened the bottle up and had this a foot away, it smelled spot on like maple candy. Um, or maple sugar, um, the candy comes from the maple sugar. But yeah, I still like it up close. Like it's definitely got that rich, warm, caramelized brown sugar vibe. Um, but it just has a little bit of an artificial smell really up close. Like I said though, a lot of fragrances are like that, especially when they're at very high strength like this. Essential oils are like that too. People give fragrances a really bad rap. Oh, well, it's because they are synthetic. Well. A lot of fragrances are uh, contain a lot of components that are bio-identical to uh, things that you'd get in nature as well. And the candle science ones are also infused with essential oils too. So anyway, that's a whole nother topic. But um, yeah, this one's interesting. Uh, I'd be curious to see how this performs in a final product, but uh, out of the bottle, a foot away, it smells spot on like maple sugar. And last but not least, the one I'm most excited for, this is Fog and Fern. Now, anything with a name like this is gonna immediately captivate me. Why? Because I love anything mysterious. I love anything green as well. I love those kind of forest fairy, forest bathing, uh, twilight woods type vibes. Uh, I was that kid growing up who was obsessed with the movie Twilight and obsessed with Robert Pattinson in that movie. So, anyways, here goes Fog and Fern. Let's see what it's gonna do. Ooh, wow. Yeah, this is definitely like, this is dark. I just whacked myself in the face with a strip. Wow, this is lighter. This is probably one of the lightest oils that I've smelled though. And that's disappointing to me because I would think a fragrance like this at least from what I'm getting, that I'd be getting even more of it. But what I am smelling, oh my God, I just whacked myself again. What I am smelling, I find very intriguing. 
Uh, this definitely has, so I don't like to use the word cologne or masculine, but you guys kind of know what that associates with. It has that vibe to it. And it combines that with like a really green note. So like the type of green that's in cactus flower and jade, but without the cactus flower, like if you just took the jade and you combine that, like if you've smelled, uh, what is that soap called? Irish, um, it's, there's a type of famous bar soap and I'll put the name up on the screen. It smells kind of like that. And I feel like, especially for you soapers, if this performs well in cold process soap, that it could be a really good fun one to soap with. Um, it looks like it does have a usage rate of two to 5%. And I love how Candle Science has been putting more of those soap notes up on their website as well, because that is really helpful uh, to know how something is gonna perform. Um, so you don't just go and waste a whole batch or something. But yeah, so this is definitely more cologne-like than I expected, I will say. What I'm getting, I really like. I do wish it was mixed with something that was a little bit less of a cologne cologne, like a sort of heady cologne, and had a little bit more like uh, earthiness, some expansive earthiness. Uh, not the kind of earthiness that just goes right to your head, but just the kind of expansive like sauntering in the forest type vibes. And this does have that, but this is more, I get like a dusky evening men's cologne um, combined with like that Irish uh, type of a bar soap from this one. Well, that is gonna be all for this video. If you guys um, would like to head over to my Patreon, I will be ranking all these fragrance oils as I always do from my least favorite to my most favorite. Um, thank you so much to Candle Science for sending me these oils. Once again, this video is in no way sponsored and no way affiliated with Candle Science, but they did reach out to me and offer to send me the oils for my honest review on this channel. Um, but anyways, if you guys enjoyed this one, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And I'm sending all of you peace, love, and light, and wishing all of you happy candle making. I would like to take the time to thank my patrons for their incredible support. A massive shout out goes to Wendy, Nicole Roth, Nancy with All About Me Beauty Bar, Merle, Brad with Neon City Scents, Michelle, Paula, Zahara with Crystalline Candle Co., Julie with Belux Candle Co., Jennifer with Bea Essentials, Selena with Banbury Street Creations, Sue, Nick, Bruce, Blavia, Jennifer with Bittersweet Candle Co., Danielle, Anitra with Ninth and Maxwell, Matthew, Jindy, Lisa, Elizabeth, Carol, Cheryl with Soaps by Cheryl, Maya, Losa, Uzdari, Daichi, John with Past Sense Candles, Angela, Amber, Bluegrass Bath and Candle Co., Markita with The Beat Institute, Allie, Carla, Todd with Cold Creek Candle Co., Krista, SS, Karen with River Birch Soaps, Kina with Kijoli, Angela, Amanda, Denise with Grumblegeist Candle Co., She's More, Cindy, Kim, Teresa, Frida, Sharomi, J Creative P, Colette, Nicole, Stella, Leanne, Martha, Angela, Jamie, Chadwick, Z, Mabel, Arev, Bobby, Jamie, Amy with Candle Emporium, Stephanie, Honey, Terry, Maria, Genevieve, Gracie, Yolanda, Tonia, Susan, Irene, Rolanda with Mason Marzette, Megan, Melissa, Ursulette with Ursulette's Beauty Secrets, Kelly, TCM with Ava Bryce Co., Lois, Tia, Victoria with The Sacred Prayer, Valerie, Stacy with Firewick with Me, Belinda, Rhonda, Smadar, Duchess Luxury Creations, Juliet, Carla, Crystal with Indigo Scents Candle Co., Anika, Kim with Kimberly's Candle Co., Kim, Angelic, Tia, Chris, Miss S, Shakira, Tiffany, Kim, BN, Lizette, Chandra, Pat, Chickadee Company, Tara, Indigo, SJ, Gina, Emily, Sandra, Heidi, Sunday, Michelle, Lisa, Angela, Kelly, Angela, Natalie with Walters Wicks, Sherry, Cynthia, Denise, Sonia, Natasha, Aziza's Closet, Edward, Shambliss Candles and Soaps, Sabina, Raphael with Alondra's Candle Co., Desi, Kim, Abby Lane Candle Co., Krista, Tomi with Rosen Crown Soap, Tara, Joy, Katie, Diane, Kelly, Judith, Sherry, Diane, Courtney with 17 December. Candle Co., Stacy, Yvette, Teresa with All About Serenity, Janetta, Monica, Nick, Tim, Diane with Toe de Four, Anne with Sweet Annie's Natural Skin Care, Jennifer, Michelle, Maria, Sarah, Alex, Ruslan with Hers and Hers Candle Co., Susan, Shaylee, Yia, Christopher, Louvre, Brianna with Be Home Dispensary, Megan, Victoria, Ash, and Nicole. Your support is deeply appreciated.